morning, Due West. My name is Butch Godet. I'm so glad that you joined us in worship. If you're a visitor, please be sure to stop by the Visitor Center to get connected and learn more about Due West. In the meantime, there are a few things for you to know. Vacation Bible School registration is now open for volunteers and children of volunteers. Join us June 6th to 9th for monumental VBS as we celebrate God's greatness. If you'd like to register, go to the church sign-up page of Church Center. General registration opens May 1st. With spring arriving, it is time for our spring fling. Families and children of all ages are invited to join us next Sunday, April 10th, from 2 to 3.30 on the green space by the FLC. We'll have Easter egg hunts, a petting zoo, and more activities for kids to enjoy. If you'd like to support our spring fling, please drop off individually wrapped candies for the Easter egg hunt by today. We hope to see you next week. Holy Week is almost here. Starting next Sunday on Palm Sunday and going through Easter, we will remember and celebrate the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Throughout this week, there will be several opportunities for you to worship. We'll have a Monday, Thursday service on Thursday, April 14th at 7 p.m. in Building A. There will be a Good Friday service on Friday, April 15th at 7 p.m. in Building A. And then on Easter, we'll have a sunrise service at 7 a.m. on the green space, followed by traditional Easter services in Building A, 8.15, 9.45, 11.15, and a modern Eastern service in Building C at 9.45. That's a lot to remember, so check Facebook, the website, and Church Center for a full list of services, times, and locations. Now let us worship the Lord our God. Are y'all ready to worship the Lord your God this morning, this beautiful morning? Yes, yeah, amen. Would you please stand up and let us go to him in worship and in praise. We're going to sing that there is power in the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, the one who has saved us. The one who has set us free, we worship him.
invite you to remain standing as we continue in worship together by professing our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning once again, church. It is always so good to gather together and worship here in God's house. If this is your first time with us, if you are a visitor this morning, know that we are so glad that you are here. Uh, If you haven't already, I would encourage you and invite you to stop by our visitor center out in the narthex. We have some wonderful folks who would love to introduce you to the church, welcome themselves to you, uh, and get you signed up and let you know a little bit more about uh, Due West. And so again, if you haven't stopped by there, I would highly encourage you to do that. And we're just so glad that you have joined us this morning. As we prepare to go in God in prayer, as we always do, I want to share with you a few of our offering photos. You can see some of our wonderful kiddos that take part in our DW Kids ministry. Uh, You can see some of the wonderful things that they do to have a good time. Uh, But we also know that they do a wonderful job uh, of letting our kids know just how much Jesus loves them. Uh, I'll tell you a quick story, and I won't point them out, but one of the kids in here, I was at a, a wedding yesterday. I was doing a wedding for a couple in our church, and I was sitting with one of the kids there who, who goes to uh, our church. Yes, they put me at the kids' table when I go to weddings. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so, so we were talking, and she, she says, you're the, you, you're the pastor at the church. I said, yeah. She goes, I love going to church. It is so much fun. I get to learn so much. And so I give that to you, and, and I highlight DW Kids because they are doing a wonderful job of helping our children to know just how much God loves them and to help them do it in a fun environment. And so we're so thankful for their work, and we thank you for your support uh, that allows that kids ministry to thrive. I also wanted to give you one other update. Uh, A couple weeks ago, we told you about the roof here on Building A that we are hoping to be able to uh, redo. It needs it. Uh, We have an updated total here. We're going to keep updating you on that. Uh, And I think it might have even grown since we did this last graphic. The last number I heard was $24,000. So we are almost uh, a little over a quarter of the way there. We're so thankful for your generosity, uh, but we have a little ways to go. So we hope and pray and continue to ask for God to provide in that way. And we thank you for your support of that. As we go to God in prayer, uh, I want to share with you just a couple of joys and concerns of our congregation. First joy, as you can see, and as we have been telling you, it's a joy for us today to return back to a couple of our communal worship practices. Uh, We will be receiving communion through the practice of intinction, where we come forward to Christ's table and are given a piece of bread and we dip it in the juice. Uh, We're glad to be able to do that again, and we're also passing offering plates. Uh, So as we go back to these things, they're not new to the church, uh, but we've done them, uh, hasn't been for for about two years. Uh, So we're glad to bring those back, and we hope that you celebrate that joy with us today. I also want to share and lift up the concerns of our church. If you don't already, I would encourage you on a regular basis throughout your week as you're praying to go online to find our prayer list. You'll find a list of the folks in our church that you need to be lifting up in prayer. I know that they appreciate your prayers. Something new that we're doing, if you're not on Facebook, you may not have seen it. We're starting uh, Prayer Fridays. Uh, where we as a church are going to be praying over something. We've done that for the past two weeks, and we're going to do that going forward. Uh, Two weeks ago, we prayed for uh, Ukraine and the folks there in the war that's going on in Ukraine. Last week, this Friday, we lifted up the prayer list. I would encourage you on Fridays to go and see uh, what we as a church are praying for. Uh, We want to be a praying congregation because Scripture tells us uh, that the prayers of, of God's people are effective. And so thank you for participating in that, and we look forward to seeing how God moves through those prayers. I know, however, that these are not the only concerns that we share. So as we go to God in prayer, I will offer you a time to lift up your own hearts, and I'll say a prayer on behalf of the church. As we go to God in prayer, I'll also invite the ushers to come forward to receive our offering. Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, we come to you today with so much joy in our hearts. Joy for who you are and for the opportunity we have to worship you. 
Lord, it is an exciting day that we are able to be back and and to practice the communion through intention and to also pass offering plates. Lord, it is yet again a reminder of your active spirit in us. Lord, it is a reminder that even when rocky times come, you still are in control, that you are still God, and that ultimately you do prevail. Lord, may that same spirit be at work in our lives, that every second and every hour we might rest solely on you. And so out of that joy, Lord, we also come now to lift up our concerns. Lord, we know that each and every one of us have struggles and pains that we bring before you. We give you thanks that you listen, that you are the God who wants to know what is on our hearts. And so, Lord, for this congregation, for all of us who are gathered here, those in person and those joining us online. Lord, may your presence come to be with us. May your spirit fill us. May those who this day are mourning experience your love. May those who are hurting and lost feel your grace. Lord, you are the God who loves us. You are the God who gives us so much. And Lord, we can do nothing but give you thanks. Guide us, O Lord, as we worship you. May everything we say and everything we do bring honor and glory to you. For Lord, it is in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, that we offer this prayer. Amen. As we prepare now to receive this offering, let us pray together. Lord, we give you thanks this day for your many blessings. We pray now for the giving of these tithes and offerings. That these blessings you have given us go to building your kingdom. And that you use us for your service. Lord, it is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen.
You may be seated. Great to see you all this morning. So glad that you're here as we worship the risen Lord together. Uh, so many things to celebrate in the life of our church. Uh, just a moment of a personal privilege for actually the two of us. <clears throat> if you're not familiar with how the Methodist church uh, works all the time, I could say count your blessings, but that might sound cynical, so we won't, do, we won't go there. Uh, if you're not, at, you know, our, uh, every year, some Methodist preachers get moved. That's the way we work. And every year there's a Sunday where all that news drops, where we say this is who's moving and this is who's not moving. Uh, and that happens to be today. So today is the day I get to with joy say that in June, Latham starts year three with us, and so we're excited about that. <clears throat> uh, and it's amazing for me to believe in June, I start year six. Uh, so we're excited about that. We had a small wager on whether there would be applause or booze. We weren't sure. Uh, so we're glad, to have, glad that there was applause. We appreciate that. Uh, but we're both excited about what God is doing in this place and will continue to do in this place. So we're looking forward to the future. But for the present, our scripture this morning is from the first chapter of the book of James. Chapter 1, verses 20 through, 22 through 25. If you have your Bibles with you, James chapter 1. Or as always, it's on the screen up here. And this is what it says. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in the mirror and, after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. Let us pray. Gracious God, open our hearts, speak to us this morning. Open our spirits, let us hear your word. Lord, share with us how we are called to love you with all of our strength. In Jesus' name, amen. So today is now the fifth Sunday in the season of Lent. Lent is the season, if you don't know, that builds up to Easter. It's that season where... We prepare ourselves to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. It's a great season in the life of the church. And this year, we're talking about what is most important. Not what's sort of important. Not even what's very important. But what is most important. There's a story that comes to us from Mark's Gospel, the 12th chapter, where a teacher of the law approaches Jesus and says, so of all of the laws that we have, and there are hundreds of them, of all of them, which one is most important? And Jesus answers, and here is his response. The most important one is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. So we have talked about what does it mean to love God with all of our heart? And what does it mean to love God with all of our soul? Last week we talked about what does it look like to love God with all of our mind? And spoiler alert, today we're going to talk about what does it mean to love God with all of our strength? We see a taste of it in our scripture this morning from the book of James. Now, if you've ever sat down and read the entire book of James, and it doesn't take too long, you can see that a lot of the themes he covers in this letter, he introduces in chapter 1. Things like humility, prayer, facing different kinds of trials, and living out your faith. And that's what he's touching on here in verses 22 and forward. Living out your faith. You heard what he says, anyone who listens to the word 
Now, stop right there for a moment. Why is he focused on listening to the word? Well, there's some differences between Christians in the first century to whom James was writing and who we are today. Well, there's a lot of significant differences, like, for instance, electricity and indoor plumbing. Uh, we have those, they didn't. So those are good differences. But also, we have access to Bible, whereas they did not. We can read. Many of them could not. If you want to know what a particular passage says, you open a Bible and you read it. For them, largely, they had to wait till communal worship. They gathered together and they heard the word read. So if James were writing to us today, he would say, anyone who does not read the word, but in his day he said, anyone who listens to the word, but does not do what it says, is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and, after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. Anybody ever saw their reflection in a mirror and then walked away and immediately forgot what they looked like? Anybody ever looked at themselves in the mirror and wanted to immediately forget what they look like? Uh, yeah, yeah. We're getting applause from the choir. Uh, it's kind of silly to think about, but what James is telling us is there are two kinds of people. Here's the first kind. Those who hear the word, but don't do anything about it. It's like they hear it and just immediately forget it. And in James' day... There were people like that. And the reality is, today, there are still people like that. Uh, there was an airline mechanic. Uh, he had gone to church as a child, but not been back much since then. And, but he thought, well, I, I have been to church. I live in America, so of course I'm a Christian. He didn't see any more connection than that. Uh, he didn't really think there was a need for him to go to church or to be much more involved. He had a really good job. Uh, he had a, a wife, a good marriage, two healthy children. Thought everything in life was great. But then one day, his daughter comes home and says, Dad, my friend invited me to go skiing with her. Can I go? And he said, so is that a family trip? What's the deal? And she said, well, it's her church youth group. They're going on a ski trip. Well, they didn't go to church, but they weren't opposed to church. They said, sure, of course you can go. So she's gone on the ski trip, and she comes back, and they say, so how was it? And she is all excited, and she said, it was awesome. On this trip, I became a Christian. And they looked at her, and they said, well, honey, you've always been a Christian. I mean, you know, we live in a Christian nation. Of course you're a Christian. And she looks at her parents and says, that's what I used to think. But I now know there's a lot more to it than that. What I mean is I want to follow Jesus. And I want to be baptized. And I want you to be there. Well, they loved their kid. They were supportive. So, of course, they went. They saw their daughter baptized. And she said, I want to keep coming to this church. And I want you to come too. Well, they hadn't really thought about it, but they agreed. And over time, they heard the gospel. They saw what it meant to live out your faith. They saw Christians who loved the Lord. And they said, you know, something has been missing. And so they gave their lives to the Lord, and they joined the church. And the church was all excited. But then the fellow did something the church didn't count on. He started reading his Bible. And he read things like the book of James. And he read stories like the parable of the sheep and the goats. You know that story? Jesus tells this story about uh, the sheep and the goats. And he said, when you don't do anything at all to help those in need... It's like you're not doing anything to help me. Well, this fella read all of that, and he realized he needed to be living out his faith. He needed to be putting it into action. And a couple of things he knew immediately were that not far from his home and from the church, there was a public housing project. There were also homeless people living on the streets. And he thought, well, that seems like such an obvious place to start. But he didn't want to start by himself, so he goes to the church and says, are we doing anything in this housing project? No. Are we doing anything to help the homeless? No. Well, okay. Uh, I thought those were obvious. 
So what are we doing for the community? And the answer was nothing. He said, well, then what exactly do we do? And he said, he was told, well, we do a lot of potluck dinners and we pray for each other. And they were a very inwardly focused congregation. And he was just aghast. And he said, how can you read this and do nothing? It's a fair question, isn't it? How can you read this and do nothing? James says there's two types. One, hears, reads, and does nothing. But there's another kind. He says, but the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. The other type of people, James says, are those who hear the word, look into the freedom that Christ offers us, and they live it out. They live out their faith. They help people in the need. They do the things that Scripture calls on us to do. Those are the people that love the Lord with all their strength. So what does it mean to love something with all of your strength? Well, there are all kinds of things you can love. Uh, for the last several weeks, we've been watching the news, right? And you've been watching the war in Ukraine, and we've been praying for the people there, praying for their, our sisters and brothers in Christ in Ukraine, but praying for all of the citizens. But while we've been praying for them, if you've been watching the news, I don't know about you, I've been amazed and inspired by the stories of courage coming out of Ukraine. Have you been watching that? I read a story not too long ago. There was a grandmother, a Ukrainian grandmother. And the story was that a Russian drone dropped kind of low, and she took a jar of pickled cucumbers and threw it and hit the drone and took out the drone. Well, uh, a reporter heard it. A reporter heard that and said, that cannot be true. I just cannot believe that's true. So he tracked down the grandmother, and he said, okay, this is what people are saying. People are saying that you saw a Russian drone uh, and you took a jar of pickled cucumbers, threw it, hit the drone, and took out the drone. Is that true? And she said, no, it's not true. He said, I knew that was crazy. I knew that couldn't have happened. She said it wasn't cucumbers, it was tomatoes. <laughs> now that's courage. That's courage. There was a man who found a landmine. There's been a lot of them found in Ukraine, if you've been following the news. He saw a landmine in the middle of the road knew the risk it caused, and at the risk of his own life, gently picked it up and carried it into the woods. How's that for courage? Story after story after story. Then there's the president. If you've been watching their president on the news, word was that he was to be assassinated. So he could have gone somewhere and gone into hiding, but he chose another approach. He went on live television and said, I am in my office, right here, right now. How's that for courage? Amazing what these people are doing. Why? Because they love their country. They love their fellow citizens. They love their freedom with all of their strength. It's impressive. But what does it mean to love the Lord? To love the Lord with all your strength. Well, the Bible, of course, is filled with stories that illustrate that. Let me take, uh, share two stories with you. One from the Old Testament, one in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, there's a story of King David. You know, David was king over all of Israel. Uh, and there was the Ark of the Covenant. You know, the Ark of the Covenant contained sacred items to the Israelites. The presence of God was said to dwell in the Ark if you've ever seen Raiders of the Lost Ark and watched Indiana Jones, you know that uh, you know the Ark of the Covenant. Well, in 2 Samuel 6, the Ark is resting with a man named Obed-Edom. Anybody have a neighbor named Obed-Edom? No. Uh, and so it says that the Lord is blessing everything he does because the Ark is at his house. Well, King David sees that and wants the Ark in Jerusalem, wants the Ark in the palace or in the temple. And so he goes takes the priest because there are very specific ways you have to move the ark. 
So he goes and he gets the ark and he starts to bring it back to Jerusalem. And he is so overwhelmed and overjoyed. This is what it says. David was dancing before the Lord with all his might while he and all Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouts and the sound of trumpets. So David is dancing in the streets, literally. Well, as he approaches Jerusalem, as he approaches the palace, one of his wives, he had several, one of his wives sees that. And she is appalled. So when he gets back to the palace, instead of saying, so how was your day at work being king? She says, I saw you. I saw you out there embarrassing yourself. I saw you out there dancing like a, a, a crazy person, like a common person. It's, it's, what are you thinking? This is David's response. He says, I will celebrate before the Lord. I will become even more undignified than this. I will be humiliated in my own eyes. You hear what he's saying? I don't care what other people think. I could care less what other people think. You think this was un undignified? You ain't seen nothing yet. I'm going to keep at it. Because I'm not worried about anybody else. All I want to do is celebrate before the Lord with all my might. David loved the Lord with all his strength. Now, telling that story is not an encouragement for you to dance in the aisle. I mean, if the Lord leads you to do it, knock yourselves out. Uh, but, uh, and I'm not telling you I'm about to dance in the aisle. But I'm saying for David, that was his natural expression. How do you love the Lord with all your strength? Another example in the New Testament is the Apostle Paul. Now, you know about the Apostle Paul. He traveled around, would preach in a, a town, gather believers, start a new uh, congregation, stay there sometimes weeks, sometimes months, sometimes years, and then move on. Paul did this uh, at least three times that we know of. That we got a map. Lower right-hand corner is Jerusalem. So he starts in Jerusalem, goes all up through Syria and Turkey and uh, Greece and Italy, uh, just traveling around, going and coming back, going and coming back, going and coming back. New Testament scholars believe Paul traveled at least 10,000 miles. Now, some of that is uh, on the sea, but a lot of that's on land. Walking into a town, preaching, starting a church, maybe he's there for six weeks, maybe he's there for three years. Moving on and doing that all over again. 10,000 miles over the course of years and years and years. Put that into some perspective. Imagine you were starting in New York and you said, I'm going to head out. I'm going to stop in Philly and spend six months, maybe start a church. From there, I'm going to go to Cleveland. We don't know why you would go to Cleveland, but, for, but you go to Cleveland. Uh, and you do the same thing there, and you spend 18 months in Cleveland. Sorry if you're from Cleveland. I shouldn't have said that. Uh, and from Cleveland, uh, you move on down to Kansas City, and then you go to Denver. Uh, all kinds of terrain, all kinds of weather. And finally, you wind up in Los Angeles. Can you imagine walking that whole stretch? But you're just getting started. To match what the Apostle Paul did, you have to do that, turn around, and retrace your steps and go back to New York. Oh, and you're not done. Because there you're only at 5,000 miles. You got to do that all over again. 10,000 miles, all kinds of cities, all kinds of terrain, all kinds of weather, all kinds of people. What would motivate Paul to do that? Because he loved the Lord with all of his strength. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, there's a great uh, story where he talks about all the things he's faced. Let me just give you one verse of that. I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently. Oh, I didn't even talk about his days in prison, right? Been flogged more severely and been exposed to death again and again. But he kept going like the Energizer Bunny because he loved the Lord with all of his strength. What does it look like to love the Lord with all of our strength. Uh, I can tell you what it looks like today. I want to tell you the story about a ministry that's been going on here at Due West for a while, uh, and three people involved with it, and they gave me permission uh, to tell their story. Uh, not only what they're doing here, but some of what also they are facing personally. A backpack uh, ministry. 
We've been at this for a while. Uh, meals get packed uh, every week for students in right now two Cobb County schools that are on free and reduced lunch. Now you say if they're already getting free and reduced lunch, why are we packing a meal? Good question. Because they only go to school five days a week. Saturday and Sunday, they need some kind of nutrition. So as a church, Due West provides that. Uh, been, been at that for a while. So I'm talking to the three ladies, retired school teachers involved with this, and I said, about how many meals are you doing right now a week? They said, about 75. Now that's now with two schools. There have been times we did three. So figure 75 is a low conservative number. And as we're talking, I'm trying to think of how many weeks a year kids are in school. And they said, well, we don't start the first week because schools have to kind of get us the information and all that. So we probably do it about 30 weeks a year. So 75 meals a week for 30 weeks, do the math, 2,250 meals in a year. Now, that's impressive. I said, how long have you been at this? None of them could tell me exactly, but they all said the same thing. It's been at least 10 years. Again, do the math. Conservatively, 22,500 meals given to students who need that nutrition, and that deserves an amen, right? Amen, yeah. So our Methodist men deliver them to the schools, but these three ladies have been doing this for a long time. Let me tell you now a little bit about who they are. Uh, one, and they're going to shoot me for this, but... Uh, uh, Barbara Hollis, let me start with Barbara, uh, sitting there. Barbara, I don't know if this is the first time we actually met, but the first time I remember meeting you, I was walking down the hall in South Campus, and you were working on this. And so I stopped, and we just had this conversation, found out that Barbara had worked at Georgia School for the Deaf a while back, which is where our son graduated from. And so Barbara is there getting meals ready. Uh, Barbara, if you don't know, is right now in stage four kidney failure. Keep her in your prayers is still packing meals. Sitting next to her, Pam Davies. Uh, Pam, if she looks like her back is bothering her, it's because it is. In less than three weeks, she's having back surgery, right? Uh, so pray for her. Uh, Pam also, every week, here, packing meals to feed children that are hungry. And then there's Pam Johnson. Uh, Pam had back surgery two, three years ago. I don't see her. Uh, 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 but she was packing meal, uh, was, had back surgery two, three w years ago, went into rehab. All that went well, but then has had some nerve damage, which has affected her balance. So it's not surprising that Pam's not here because she falls very easily. Whether she's home, out, it doesn't matter. Uh, her balance has been affected. And when I talked to Pam and said, I want to lift you all up as an example of loving the Lord with all your strength, her response to me was, well, to be honest, my strength gave out a couple of years ago. I mean, uh, that's Pam. Uh, but keep all three of them in your prayers for what they're going through today. But I want you to hear that even with all of that going on, uh, over the last more than a decade, have prepared more than 20,000 meals for children. <laughs> when I called and asked, I said, I have a favor and you're not going to like it. And, <laughs> uh, but they did give me permission. What did Jesus say? As much as you do this for the least of these, you do it to me. Now, caveat at the end of this story, uh, at the end of the school year, they're going to give this up. Uh, they're at the point where they need to give this up. And all three of them said the same thing to me. We hope our church will continue. So the way that our church continues is somebody says, I hear the Lord speaking to me to be a part of this. It could be two people, three people, five people. It could be a Bible study. It could be a small group. It could be a Sunday school class. There are all kinds of ways it can be done. Uh, but their wish is not for recognition. It's that this continue. So keep that in your prayers. Mark Helman is sitting here, our director of missions. If you have an interest in this, talk to Mark. He would love to talk to you. Our missions budget uh, provides the materials. Our Methodist men do the delivery. Uh, he can talk to you about what that would look like. Uh, but these are ladies that know what is most important. Loving the Lord with all of our strength. The man said to Jesus, of all these laws, of all these commands, 
what is most important. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. It is for us, according to Jesus, most important. As we think about feeding people and what that looks like and means, we also are reminded that we too are fed, that there's a meal that has been prepared for us to sustain us, to strengthen us, to give us the grace to love the Lord with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, and all our strength, to remind us of the love that Jesus has for us and how we are called to express our love for him. In a moment, we'll gather at the Lord's table right here at the table, and we're excited about doing that. But first, let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we thank you for examples of those who love you with all they have. Lord, increase the capacity for love in each and every one of us so we can love you the way you have called us to love you, so that we can love you and understand what is most important. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, as we prepare to come to the Lord's table, some things that we used to say every week, but uh, just to remind you, as you come, if you'll come and place your hands in the shape of a cross, that reminds us that the, of the sacrifice of Jesus on our behalf. You'll be given a piece of bread, be invited to dip that into the chalice and receive communion that way. We have been using self-contained communion packets for 25 months, as you know, uh, because of COVID. We still have those. So if you are not quite ready to take bread and dip it into the chalice, we understand that. If you want a self-contained packet, simply come to the table, uh, wherever you're sitting. If you could come to either side of the table, we have those here. Likewise, if you have issues with gluten and need gluten-free communion, the self-contained packets are gluten-free. So if either you just simply want self-contained or gluten-free, please come to the table and we'll have those for you here. It's a reminder as well that this table does not belong to us. It belongs to God. It's open to all who would acknowledge your need for the grace of God and come and receive this sign, this sacrament, this illustration of his grace. Uh, at this time, I want to, uh, well, we want to uh, go to the Lord and confess as we always do. I have a prayer of confession, so hear this invitation, and then we'll pray together. The prayer of confession. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us the new covenant by water and the spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread gave thanks to you, broke it, 
gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This time we want to invite those that are helping serve to come forward. Lord's table is open and you're invited to come as the ushers direct you.
as we continue in this act of worship, I encourage you to just sing the words of this song. feel good to come to the Lord's table? Amen. <laughs> Following the benediction, turn and greet your neighbor. Tell them God bless them. Tell them you enjoyed worshiping the Lord with them today. Gracious God, send us forth. Sustain by your grace from your table. And with our capacity to love increase so that we might go forth from this place. Remembering always what is most important. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we worship. In Jesus' name we go forth. And all God's people said, amen.